sudden things are hard to minimize the sudden Happens. Future resources in Bangalore ecosystem by Assistant Professor Dr. Rajendran Sar. Dr. Rajendran Sar is an Assistant Professor in Zoology, Government, Art College, and Dembrans, Anya. He is a teaching on Zoology and Marine Biologics. Well, first with Mangrove Corner and 23 years of teaching and research experience, and he executed two research projects. He published over 70 papers and 19 books. Now he is guiding on four PhD research scholars, and he visited to Japan, Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, and Kenya. So, sir, please, sir, kindly give your lecture and welcome. Is that ready? Thank you, Dr. Wawa Min, for a nice introduction. Uh, good morning, all of uh, the participants. So now I am going to present an important aspect of mangrove ecosystem that is fishery resources. As I hope all you might have heard of the previous lectures delivered by two experts on mangroves. So however, I am not included those which they presented. But I'm only restricted to the fishery resources in the mangrove ecosystem. So, well, the mangroves are structurally complex system found along the tropical and subtropical latitudes. So they are rich in resources such as fish, prawn, and crabs, which are very important for the economy of the coastal people. So it is often correlated the fishery yield in the coast are higher with the luxuriant mangroves. So this is because of the litters which are produced by the mangroves play an important nutrient base for food webs. How it is formed? So during the decomposition, a large amount of nutrients are released and the detritus food is formed. These detritus food contributes to the fishery production in the mangroves. Well, the mangrove litter is a basis of food production, but the different mangroves give different amount of litter. So to cite an example, about 23.7 ton per hectare per year produced by the Australian mangroves, whereas 9.4% of litter Ten hectare per year in Bermuda, whereas in India it is only eight ton per hectare per year. But these liters are break down by the macrofauna such as crab and mollusk and colonized by the microbes that are converted into protein rich detritus food for fishes. In general, the coastal ecosystem support the fish resources, but among the coastal ecosystem, the three important ecosystems are produced more organic nutrients. 
So for example, mangroves, 70% productive ecosystem. So whereas the seagrass, 50% more productive ecosystem, and then coral reef is 10% more productive ecosystem. So these ecosystems support large amount of organisms which are present, which are coming from the oceanic water to the inland. So it was estimated globally, so more than 80% of marine catches are directly or indirectly depends on the coastal ecosystem. So nearly 90% of the organisms spend their life cycle within these coastal ecosystems. So because of the interconnectivity of the hydrodynamics in the coastal region, actually with uh, the, the, the hydrodynamic system is play a major role in the migration of the fishes from one place to another place. So for example, so if you look at this diagram, so the rainfall brought the nutrients and organic carbons to the coastal ecosystems such as the estuaries and mangroves. From the mangroves, these nutrients and the organic carbons are exported to the oceanic waters. So this facilitates so more number of larval forms and also the migratory forms of fishes enter into the coastal system. So the anadromy fishes, which are migrating from the oceanic water to the freshwater through the coastal ecosystem, such as estuaries and mangrove water. So similarly, the cathedromy fishes, which are migrating from the freshwater to the oceanic water, using this pathway and then so because of the intermediate that means the hydrological connectivity of this ecosystem so large number of fish larvae and also the prawn larvae are entered into the system to utilize the 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 structural complexity and the food availability in the mangrove system. So the larval migration is coming from the ocean water and settling in the fisherin and the mangrove waters because of the, the shelter, the protection provided by the mangrove ecosystem and the platonic resources and the rich in epiphytic form, uh, epiphytes and also for the detritus food availability, make sure to enter into the system. So after spending their life, some part of the life here, and attain the subadult stage, so when it is attain the subadult stage, so they are immigrating from the coastal system to the oceanic water for further development and breeding and spawning purpose. So mangroves are important in fishery production. As we know, uh, the globally, mangroves are important in providing food and income. So about 30% of all commercial fish species are mangrove development worldwide. Sorry, mangrove dependent worldwide. So According to the FAO, the mangroves are producing 30 million tons of cats annually. So these brought the, the version which is used by the scientific community. So no mangroves, no prawns, and no crabs.
Russia. India living fish are reported in the Indian mangrove. So very interestingly, the 40 species of elasma branchs coming under 12 families are reported from the Indian mangrove system to the, in the, the Sundarban mangrove system. So the rest of the 619 species are bony fishes under 99 families. So, in coming to the state-wise mangrove cover, the 346 species are reported in the Andhra Pradesh mangrove system, followed by the 322 in the Sundarban mangrove forest of the West Bengal. So, the least number of thin fishes reported in the Gujarat mangroves, only 63 species. Among these numbers, so only seven species are common in all these mangroves of all states of India. Then 60 species are very common along the east coast mangroves of India. The different type of food habit of fishes spend their part of their life in the mangrove ecosystem, such as herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and detritivores. And come to the distribution of the prawn and the shrimps in the mangrove ecosystem. So it was reported 67,735 species are living globally, the crustaceans living globally. So when coming to the India, so the living crustaceans are 3,835, that is 5.66% of the uh, global living crustaceans. Coming to the India, in Indian mangroves, 624 species of crustaceans reported so far, that is 16.27% of the uh, living crustaceans in India. Out of 624 crustaceans, 308 species are decapods. So from 308, so only prawn and shrimps are described in this figure. So there are 69 species are reported in, in the Indian mangroves out of 154 species reported in the global mangroves. So very interestingly, three species of lobsters are also reported from the Indian mangroves, the two in the Sundarban mangroves. So the number is higher in the Andhra Pradesh mangrove uh, covered than the lower in the Karnataka, and Puducherry and the Kerala mangroves. So we did some experimental work. Whether the shrimps are attracted toward the mangroves. So what purpose they are coming here? So we made a litter bag experiment in the mangrove environment. And interestingly, we conducted the experiment for 80 days. So during the decomposition of the mangrove leaf, so we found the interesting results that at the initial stage of the decomposition, the tannin content, which are very much available in the mangrove leaves, are degraded immediately. The two up to 20 days they are leaching after submerged in the water. After that, the nitrogen content is increased. 
So why the nitrogen content is increased in the decomposition of mangrove leaf during the 30 to 50 days? So there is an another interesting results we obtained. So it is only because of the nitrogen fixing bacteria like acidobacters are very rich in the 30 to 50 day of decomposition. So because of the, the bacterial association, the nitrogen level is increased and then the prawn fish resources also increased during the 30 to 50 day of decomposition. And coming to the global catch and revenue from the mangroves, so it is estimated that one hectare of mangroves can yield 767 kg of wild fish and crustaceans, which is more than the yield in extensive farming system. And coming to the revenue of the fish that caught from the one hectare of mangroves, it is 11,300 US dollar per year at par with the most profitable intensive shrimp farming. And coming to the India, the benefits from mangroves are 25 fold greater than that of paddy cultivation in India. So we analyzed different mangrove habitats in South India on the fish diversity and the economy derived from the fish fishery resources. So we selected three mangrove habitats. One is mangrove rich habitat. The second one is mangrove less habitat and the third one is mangrove poor habitat. So when we analyzed the diversity of the fishery resources, so we recorded the 102, 102 species of pin fishes and 17 species of cell fishes. So this is only included prawn and some uh, fortunate crabs are rich in the mangrove rich habitat and coming to the followed by the uh, uh, mangrove less habitat which we reported 86 pinfish species and 17 selfish species so it indicates the luxuriant mangroves support biodiversity of the fishery resources in coming to the yield of the fin and selfish catch from mangroves, so these three ecosystems were compared. So in mangrove rich habitat, support 4.5 kg per hectare per day fin fishes and 11 kg per hectare per day of shellfishes. So followed by the mangrove less habitat and also mangrove poor habitat. And coming to the gain by selling the fin and shellfishes caught from the mangrove environment. So the mangrove rich environment support, this is given in the Indian rupee. So 154.6 rupees per hectare per day was reported in 2000, so corresponding to 675 rupees in the current value of fin fishes. So coming to the cell fishes, it is 603.6 rupees in 2000, and it was now 2200 rupees per hectare per day of cell fishes. Coming to the less habitat, it's 130.5 rupees per hectare per day in fishes in 2000 
and now it is 176 rupees per hectare per day. Coming to the selfie. Ecosystem. So the ecosystem service will be last another 100 years. The rate of is estimated 1 to 2 percent per year that is greater than coral reefs and rainforest. So mangroves are approaching extinction in 26 countries. So already reported there is a decline in macrofaunal diversity in the Kenyan mangrove due to deforestation of mangroves. So coming to the important aspects of the fishery resources, so the declining of resources in the mangrove ecosystem. So this is because of uh, the, the closure of Yeshurin mouth and also in the damming along the upstream waters, that means in the rivers, not freely allowing the fish migration for breeding and spawning. In coming to these, the second important uh, reason is pollution of fish habitats with untreated, which are sending untreated aquaculture waste discharges, agriculture waste, industrial waste, and urbanization. So because of this, the loss of other nursery grounds also the reason for declining the fishery resources in the coastal environment such as seaweed and seagrass. The most important uh, thing is the indiscriminating fish, uh, discriminate fishing in the mangrove waters. So for example, in Indian Sundarbans, the 540 million tiger prawn juveniles are collected by the 40,000 fishers in a year, for which 10.26 billion other fish juveniles are killed and wasted. In, in the recent years, from the Sundarban, for collecting 17 tiger prawn seed, they are killing 313 zonales of 37 species of fin species is reported. So likewise, in Bangladesh, for collection of 3% of tiger prawn larvae, they are killing 97% of fish larvae. So this is a very important assessment given by the ocean health uh, system. So in 2016, this estimate was given that so the globally, the degraded area is 1,38,856 hectares or days. So among which, so 8,12,003 hectares are available for the restoration. So once if we restore this much of hectare, the commercial fish enhancement will be 23 lakh and 197 and uh, 605 million individuals per year. Similarly, the commercial invertebrate enhancement like 30 lakh 710 and 3300 one million individuals per year. So coming to the India, so the total degraded area available in India, so 1,151 hectares, so among which uh, the, the uh, total restorable area is available 15,241 hectares. So if you are planted with mangroves, this degraded area may furnish 16 lakh 20 
uh, sorry, 281 million individuals per year of pin pieces and uh, 50, 54,452 million individuals of invertebrate per year. So in this aspect, so we have developed some vegetation trap technique in the macro environment to attract the, the uh, fishes in the nearby habitats. So it was interesting, threefold higher spooling of the zonal streams around the trap was recorded than the control one. So coming to the last aspect of uh, the fishery resources, it is very important to manage or the management of mangroves in the global countries. So as I pointed out earlier, the hydrological connectivity is very important to ensure free flow of water in the coastal ecosystem. So the effluent treatment is necessary before discharging the effluents from industries and the, the, the urban 